There's a number of best practices you can follow when installing applications. And a really important one, doesn't really matter what application you're installing, is try to shut down all the other applications running on your computer at that time. You've probably seen this message before. It's recommended you close all other applications before starting setup. And that's because these application installation programs may be trying to overwrite a file that already exists in the Windows directory or files that may already be in use elsewhere on your computer. And you may have to turn off some services as well to make sure these applications install. You cannot have a program installing over a file that's currently open. So try to take advantage of turning all these things off so you don't run into any of those kinds of conflicts. You also want to check the versions of applications you're installing. Some apps are specifically written to work in 64-bit versions of the operating system. Others want to work in 32-bit operating systems. You want to see if it runs in Windows Vista. Does it run in Windows XP? Is it really designed for a different version of Windows? And can we check with the manufacturer and make sure that if it says that it works in Windows XP, does it really also work in Windows Vista? We want to be sure of that. You may find that when you start up your computer, you get a message. And that message may be extremely vague. Like this one, your computer is all busticated. Well, that's not a real message. I made that one myself. But occasionally, you'll get these messages on the screen that don't point to a particular program. They don't point to a particular application. You have no idea where that error message came from. It's very vague. Sometimes it's when the computer starts up. Sometimes it's after you log in. One thing you may want to try to do is log in with a different username or log in as the administrator, which has a different, completely different set of applications that starts up. It's a very different uh, user profile on that machine. So you may find out that if you, you uh, configure the system and install it and log in as the administrator, that you're not getting the error. When you log in as yourself, you do. Then you know the problem is specifically related to your particular username. This can be caused by Windows. It could be applications that are running. It could be things in your startup group. It could be things that run automatically through the registry. Sometimes the title bar of the error will have the exact problem associated with it. You may have to go to your event log, which may also have some additional details in it. It may be able to tell you this was the executable that was running when this particular error occurred. And that can help you as well. Because if you know the executable, you start running down. What program was that that was running? And if you're getting a message that says your computer is all busticated, try going to Google and typing that particular error message in. And even if it is something really odd and esoteric and it's just a bunch of letters and numbers, you'd be surprised how many other people have experienced this problem and have already documented it in Google. So make sure you take advantage of those online resources as well. Is there anything more annoying than a printer that just won't print? You send it the print message. You have a document all ready to go, and the printer just sits there. There's a number of things you can do, though, to help you through the process. You have to consider that when you're printing out of Windows, it's actually just saving that printout as a file. And it saves it on your computer and puts it into something called the spooler. The spooler is responsible at that point from taking the file that you just saved, and now its job is to actually do the printing process. Prior to Windows, we couldn't even have the spooler in place. When we printed something, we had to wait until it finished printing before we could ever go do something else with our computer. Now the spooler is really useful. The problem, though, is if your spooler is having problems, it's just not going to print. You may send it to your hard drive. You may have all of these jobs all set up to print, and that may be the issue. It could be that something in the queue is corrupted, that the queue itself needs to be cleared out and restarted. There's a service running on your computer called the Print Spooler Service. And if you go into the control panel in your services, it's under your administrative tools of your control panel, in the services is this Print Spooler. You may just be able to stop it and start it up again, and you may find that everything begins working again. So don't, don't forget about that spooler. It may be the thing that's really slowing everything down or hogging up the queue, and it's clogged, and you just need to clear it out a little bit. You should also look at the driver on your printer and make sure that it matches up with what the printer really is. If you have a particular HP driver on your computer, make sure that is the exact model of that HP printer that you're printing to. Sometimes incompatible incompatibilities between the driver and the piece of hardware can create problems when printing as well. The printers have very specific languages. 
Different printers have different trays, different options for colors, different options for the types of trays where it pulls the paper from. You need to be very, very clear that the driver and the printer itself are exactly aligned. And you may want to check and make sure you have the latest driver as well. Inside those drivers, here's a good example of an Epson Laser Writer 1000 and an HP LaserJet 8150. Look at the differences. These are just the device settings for each of these. The, the Action Laser 1000 has an upper tray, a manual paper feed, a lower tray, two font cartridges, and that's kind of it. But look at the LaserJet 8150. Lots of different trays, a manual feed, an envelope feeder, a bunch of different font cartridge slots. There's a lot more capabilities there. You want to be sure of those drivers and that match up completely with that printer. And this is exactly why. For review, let's see what we've learned about our operating system issues. Our first question is, where can you get details about a Windows stop error after the computer has restarted? And a great place to go is going to be your event log. It tries to store as much as possible. If it's got something to put into the log, it's going to put it right there into that event log. During the installation of an application, you get a file in use error. How can you easily resolve this problem? Well, we notice that whenever we install something, it says close everything out. Make sure that if you have any open applications, close them all out right now. And I'll bet if you close those out, you'll resolve that issue with an open file there that you're just not able to replace. And the last question is where can you get detailed information about printer settings? Well, one of the easiest places to go for that is right in your printer properties. And you can go through the tabs there and learn all about how this particular printer should be operating. If you'd like to that covers what we needed to know for our CompTIA A plus 22701 section 2.2 for operating system issues. We've gone through blue screens and lockups and I.O. device problems, application installations, starting or loading application, and lastly, looking at how we can help resolve printing problems. If you'd like to watch any of our free A plus videos, participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.